Hey everyone, it's Nate with Doctors of Running, and today I'm going to be bringing you through a deep look at the update from my favorite trainer from last year, which was the Nova Blast 3. I got over 250 miles in on this shoe during my training blocks, and I just loved it for all around running. It was my go-to daily trainer, and that's obviously why I have the bulk of my miles from last year in on this shoe. And I'm just going to be comparing it to the updates that we have in the new version, version 4 of the Nova Blast. So first, I'm going to run us through a little bit of specs. Uh, for the Nova Blast 3, we were at 8.9 ounces or 253 grams in a men's size 9, 7.8 ounces and 222 grams uh, in a women's size 8. We go up just a little bit in this version, but not a whole lot. It's just 0 0.2 ounces of, of an increase in the men's models and only 0.1 <laughs> increase of an ounce in the women's size model. Uh, and so it's really a minimal change in weight, but it also came with an increase in stack height. So before this was a 38 um, millimeter stack in the heel down to a 30 in the forefoot for that eight millimeter drop. You keep the eight millimeter drop here, but I think what's interesting is you add three and a half millimeters of stack in both the heel and the forefoot for the men's version. And you add two and a half millimeters of stack for the women's version. So they do have different stacks, which brings it over that 40 millimeter stack height, which in the past was kind of this this thing that was unique and now especially for ASICs they have a number of shoes that are over the stack height you have the Super Blast you have the Nova Blast and you have the Nimbus 25 so they went from not having a true maximalist shoe to now having three shoes with a ton of stack so you get three more millimeters of stack three and a half more millimeters of stack in the shoe but you don't see a major increase in weight. And I'll get into why that is. And part of that is going to be what they did with the upper. So in the upper, you get a lot more thinning out of the thickness in the forefoot. So when you compare the three versus the four, you're not really able to see through version three. It had a couple layers. It was a little bit thicker on the thicker end, which was nice for me with winter running. Um, and on this version, you have holes that perforate all the way through, and it's more of an engineered mesh that is a little bit, um, a little bit thinner, which is, I'm guessing, where they cut out some of the weight. Um, and I'll get into where they may have cut out a little bit of the weight to not have a huge gain despite adding three and a half millimeters of foam underneath the foot. So I want to start comparing the uppers a little bit further beyond just what I said with the weight. You do have this thinner mesh but you also get a lot more flexibility in the forefoot. So in the previous version, it wasn't super flexible, but in this one, there's a nice amount of stretch that comes through the forefoot, which allows for a little bit more accommodation. I would say in terms of fit, you get a very similar uh, amount of snugness uh, in the in the toe box it's not like they opened it up a huge huge amount but the amount of stretch that you get from this shoe helps give a little bit extra space in in the toe box and it accommodates just a little bit more it's nothing major but it's just a little bit more the fit otherwise if you did try version three is about the same which for me fit very true to size i have a men's size nine and it feels very good for width and length not too snug not too loose locks down really well in the heel <clears throat> and through the midfoot but a couple of the changes that they made to the uppers for in the positive realm, one is in the heel itself. So you can just see the difference between the heel construction. You have a little bit more of that elf ear with a retro curve and it's a little bit softer. Whereas the version three, when you look at the top part that interacts with your Achilles region, it's just a firm top with kind of the curve going in towards the foot. And the change that they made here, uh, besides adding a nice uh, pull tab, um, you get a little bit of a curve outward and it's a lot more flexible up at the top. So I found that to be a lot more comfortable around the uh, my heel bone, around the calcaneus. And if you're somebody who's sensitive to having the um, heel counter digging into the back of your heel, this one kind of maybe corrects for some of the issues if you had that in version three. So <clears throat> overall, I think there's just a bunch of small updates that make this upper a little bit better because it performs just as well in terms of security, but it's more comfortable in the heel. It's got a little bit more stretch in the forefoot. And then finally, they just add it. It's the same kind of split design tongue. Uh, but it has just that little extra bit of padding, which allows you to lace it down just a little tighter without having irritation. So the winner of the update is definitely the update where you get a little bit better um, front to back in terms of comfort and performance. And it takes off a little bit of weight without sacrificing some of that security. So I really like what they did with the upper. And if you had some of those issues with version three, you're going to probably have a little bit more luck in version four.
Now, I think the big changes came through the construction of the midsole. So a couple things that are the same. One of them surprised me. So when I was just looking at these shoes from the top, when I had them on, it really felt like they really widened the foot contact surface, both in the forefoot and in the heel, where they made this a really wide platform. And yeah, when I was looking at it, I kind of saw these uh, you know, the flaring in the forefoot and some flaring in the heel behind posteriorly, some flaring here on the um, heel in the lateral and medial side. But when I did some measurements, I had the exact same measurement between the width of the forefoot and width of the heel, which is almost the same as what they have in the Super Blast and the Nimbus 25, which are their widest platform shoes. There's less than a half an inch, less than a quarter inch difference actually between the, the heel width here and the heel width in the Super Blast and in the Nimbus 25. And that's the same, obviously, since they're the same width, you're seeing the same thing here um, in the Nova Blast 4. I found that kind of surprising, and part of the reason I thought it was surprising is because of how it felt on the on foot. So I never really had any clunkiness issues with version 3. I felt like the foam compressed really well with where I was landing, and I didn't feel like the sole flaring, uh, both on, in the forefoot and the heel and posteriorly, didn't really feel like that interfered with my foot contact or any any transitions through. I uh, admittedly I only have limited miles on this pair so far and I have a lot more testing to go and it might change as it breaks in but I found that there was a little bit more abrasiveness and I could just feel the flaring both posteriorly and laterally um, in the heel and it just made it feel a little bit more clunky on landing it wasn't bad but it was just a little bit more clunky part of that could be due to the fact that there are three more millimeters of stack, which just means that I'm contacting the ground a little bit earlier than I would have in something that's slightly lower. Again, three and a half millimeters in some ways is a lot, and in some ways might be negligible difference when you're looking at something that's already at 38 millimeters, but that could be one reason why I was experiencing a little bit more clunkiness. It also could be with the amount of foam that's there, it could be that that amount of contact uh, or sorry, that amount of foam could lead to a little bit more of that a firmer feel that I get in this version. Um, and, and that little bit more firm foam feel could lead to more of the kind of abrasive landing that you feel. That's because of moment arms and things like that that act around your ankle. But that could be another reason why I was feeling a little bit more of that clunky transition. It was not, I, I say clunky not because it was clunky by definition, but it was clunkier than what I would feel in version 3, which was perfectly smooth. The other big difference that I'm noticing, at least, between a pair that, again, has 250 miles on it and a brand new fresh pair of the new version is the flexibility of the forefoot. So you can see I can get a lot of flex through the forefoot on my third version, where is in this version, version 4, it's a lot less flexibility and it doesn't have kind of a hinge point. And I could feel that on the run. It felt like a much stiffer ride. I'm sure as I build up miles and get closer to that 100 mile marker, there might be a little bit more flexibility. But the fact that there are three and a half millimeters more of foam here does mean that you'll get a little bit more rigidity through the forefoot, at least in these early miles, which is just something you have to consider if you want that flexibility in your daily trainer or if you're okay with a little bit more of a rocker design. The other thing that they changed in terms of geometry, and this is small, but I think it makes a significant difference for some people, um, is the positioning of the sidewalls. So when you look at shoes like this, it, you know, it can always be very, uh, it's a little bit of an optical illusion. You know, this amount of foam is not the amount that is, uh, that is underneath your foot. Your foot is actually sitting down about this far into the foam. And so everything above that is a side wall. So that acts that's on your foot above where your foot is sitting in the platform. And they move the side wall in version four posteriorly. So if you can, I hope that you can see the difference here between version three and version four. But you have, um, the, the, it's probably a good, you know, here I'll show you this way too probably a good inch or so that they moved the sidewall posteriorly um, on the shoe. And so that means that the sidewall is going to be cradling the foot more towards the heel. And I know for some, and including myself for versions one and two, the heel of the Nova Blast was just too unstable for me. Some people still had that issue in version three. I was fine in version three, but now in version four, adding the sidewall going a little bit more posterior might mean that it gives you a little bit more of that guidance. And I know um, Matt <coughs> will have his take on this shoe and and he is somebody who usually likes a little bit more structure and guidance in the heel. So curious to hear 
Uh, I, I'm sure you'll get to hear his thoughts on our full written review. So I thought that was an interesting modification to the geometry of this shoe. Finally, with the three millimeters of stack, what they seem to do is added the stack everywhere except these flex grooves. So the flex grooves in version four are much, I have flex grooves is the wrong word, but like guidance lines or kind of the, the longitudinal line here, it's a lot deeper than what you have in version three. And so there's a lot more of a, of a groove here, both uh, in the forefoot and then the central one in the heel. That does um, make a difference. I think that I can feel a little bit more of a compression when I land. Um, once I get all of my weight on it, I feel a little bit more of a bounce, even though it's slightly firmer. It does feel a little bit bounce here, particularly in the forefoot. So I talked about this last year with the Nova Blast 3, but this shoe really you can feel the forefoot cushioning. There's a couple shoes that give you that kind of forefoot cushioning feel. The On Cloud Monster is another one, but you could really feel that here in version three where they put that, they purposely have some cutouts here so that you can feel the cushioning in the middle of the forefoot. That's even accentuated more now that we have more foam up there and there's deeper cuts. You can really feel that here. The last thing I want to talk about in comparing these two models is the outsole and the changes there. So they are using Ahar Low, which is their lowest density. I can't even remember. I wish, and I tried to even look it up. So somebody help us out in the comments. I couldn't really see uh, exactly what they used in version three, but they do have version four, which is just their lowest density, which means it's lighter weight, it keeps the weight down. But you can see uh, if it is the same on version three, after about 250 miles, you can start to see that I got some pretty decent wear through there, but there's still plenty of rubber. And they did kind of the same thing here. There's a lot of rubber, it's thick, you're gonna have a lot of it. It's just how long is it going to last in terms of the, the traction characteristics that they gave it here. I was somebody that never had issues in the rain or the wet when it came to the Nova Blast 3. I know a lot of people did. I didn't have any of those issues um, and it was never a concern of mine. And I kind of expect the same thing here. Um, I haven't been able to run in rain yet, so I can't speak to it, but there are a little bit deeper cuts within this compared to what the start of version 3 was. So for me, again, this rubber performed just fine, plus having a little bit deeper cuts will allow for a little bit extra traction. So. Really interesting update. I'm actually really curious to see which of these models I end up leaning towards after getting full miles and more miles on this pair. Um, I am in a love-hate relationship with, with all the cushioning going on, and I really liked about the Nova Blast having, despite it being 38 and 30, which is still a lot of, a lot of stack, you still had some flexibility, whereas this one, as of now, is still pretty stiff. And so I'm excited to see if it breaks in a little bit more and which trainer I end up leaning towards uh, at the end of the at the end of the day but good updates overall particularly to the upper and some interesting ones of the geometry which might make it might help it work better for some people rather than others